Hello, it's Mike again from the Big Rock Ranch. If you own a rotary cutter, it likely has one of two forms of protection in front of the gearbox. And that is if you encounter something in the field that doesn't move, it's something that protects both this high dollar gearbox and the PTO shaft in your tractor so you don't do major damage. One of those forms of protection is a shear bolt. I have another video out that shows how to change a shear bolt. This particular piece of equipment has a slip clutch. And today we're going to show you how to service a slip clutch. Uh, slip clutches are designed so if you encounter something in the field that doesn't move, the clutches all take the brunt of the impact. Everything underneath stops and the PTO keeps turning until you get out from away from that obstacle. Now the only maintenance you really have to do on a slip clutch is occasionally you have to burn those clutches in. And the reason that is, especially if the cutter sets outside, if it gets just a little moisture in those clutches, they can kind of freeze together or weld themselves together, and then you have no protection. So what we're going to do today, we're going to burn these slip clutches in, and this is something you should do every year before you use the machine if you have a slip clutch. The first thing we need is the owner's manual. Now, the concept on burning slip clutches is the same, but there are some things unique to each individual cutter, and you will need the owner's manual to know how to do this. And I'm going to follow the owner's manual in my operation today. The first thing we need to do is we're going to take the PTO shaft off at the back next to the gearbox. And uh, this is a real easy cutter to get to that. Uh, you have to fold up the shield and then pull a, uh, a spring back and it disengages some ball bearings and the thing comes right off. And that's going to enable me to show you really easily what's inside of this. And here is a slip clutch. Now what we're going to do, we're going to put a couple of paint pencil marks on this slip clutch. And that's going to tell us when we're done if we've been successful. One of those marks goes on the hub right here and the other mark we've put on the what's called a Belleville spring. And what's going to happen, we're going to loosen all this up and when we burn these clutches these marks shouldn't be aligned any longer. Now there are six bolts that hold this slip clutch assembly together. We're going to loosen up these six bolts. We're not going to take them out, we're going to loosen them so everything inside can, can spin. We're going to put the PTO shaft back in place. Now with, with everything away from the cutter, we're going to engage the PTO off and on several times. We're going to turn it on at full engine speed, turn it off, let everything kind of come to a stop. We're going to turn it back on again, and I'm going to do this five or six times. And what should be happening inside of that slip clutch is those clutches should be slipping and kind of burning in place. When we're done with this operation, we're going to stop the tractor and check to make sure that our marks are no longer aligned. That tells us that the clutches did in fact slip. If they did not, uh, you might try loosening the, the bolts just a little bit more and try the process again, but if, if, if they don't turn, you've got something frozen up in there and it'll need to be serviced. Now after we've done all that, and sure enough, the marks are no longer aligned, so we know that the clutch has slipped. Now, there's a gap in this slip clutch that we'll need to measure. And it measures, it's this, this space right here. And we're going to tighten all these bolts up until there's a four millimeter space right here. And then we're going to put everything back together and the slip clutch is ready to go to the field. To get the rest of the cutter ready, I have a separate video I urge you to watch.